Hi, my name is Dr. Joel Kremer, I'm a professor of medicine at Albany Medical College and director of research at the Center for Rheumatology here in Albany, New York. I am going to be discussing a poster presentation at the ULOR Annual Congress in Madrid. Uh, the title of the poster is Tocilizumab Inhibits Radiographic Progression and Improves Physical Function in Patients with Rheumatoid Arthritis at Five Years with Maintenance of Clinical Efficacy Over Time. This was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, dose-ranging trial, which was an extension of a trial that has previously been published. I will review the, uh, the way the trial was designed. There was a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio, three groups initially, of patients with active rheumatoid arthritis on methotrexate. These patients could have been exposed to a TNF inhibitor and failed the TNF inhibitor because of lack of efficacy. However, at the time of entry into the trial, they were just on background methotrexate at dosages between 10 and 25 milligrams. They were not on other DMARs. They then received either 4 milligrams per kilogram of tocilizumab, 8 milligrams per kilogram of tocilizumab, or a placebo. At week 16 and again at week 24, they could have been rescued if they did not have an ACR20 response. And the rescue consisted of if you were on placebo, you received four milligrams per kilogram. If you were on four milligrams per kilogram, you received eight milligrams per kilogram. And if you're on eight milligrams, you were sustained on eight milligrams. And the, the study was double-blinded through year one. After year one, there was an open-label extension of eight milligrams per kilogram. And then beyond year two, there was an open-label extension, all patients on eight milligrams per kilogram. So the results as they are presented will actually compare all patients who received tocilizumab from year one through year five. However, the results are divided into those who are actually on placebo for part at least of year one, and then were exposed to the drug later. Keep in mind that all these patients had long-standing disease. The mean disease duration was approximately nine years. They all had active disease with a mean number of tender and swollen joints uh, ranging from about 15 to 17 to 22 to 29, respectively. They had uh, high DAS scores in the low sixes. They had uh, median HAC scores of about 1.3 to 1.5. So these people all had active disease. Now, I won't go over the original results of Lithe. Uh, Lithe did obviously show a uh, quite a good response to tocilizumab. The purpose of this long-term extension was to determine whether or not the radiographic benefits that had previously been reported at year two could be sustained through year five. And if the differences that were observed at year two between those patients who were initially on placebo and then received active drug, uh, if there were differences that were sustained in the radiographic outcomes. In fact, they were sustained through year two, which is, I guess, what I would have expected if they were on a placebo for a significant proportion of that period. And they were on a placebo, as I said, given the rescue between uh, anywhere between 16 and 24 weeks. And some a small proportion would have been on placebo for a longer period. But everyone was on active drug after year one. So if you look at the actual radiographic results, and we'll look at them first. Uh, in fact, 
the differences in the radiographic response between the patients who were on placebo initially and then received active drug and the patients who received active drug from the very beginning of their experience with the trial. That difference was sustained. And in fact, at year five, for those that had uh, radiographic outcomes, let me back up and tell you a little bit about them. There were initially about 1,100 patients in the trial. We had x-ray data on almost 800 patients. Of those 800 patients, at year five, we still had about 30, 36% of patients who remained in the trial. And that did not mean necessarily that the, uh, the, the balance, what is that, 56% dropped out, because these patients were staggered. So at this point in time, they were staggered at entry. Only at five years, only that percentage of patients had actually reached, achieved that five-year endpoint. The mean duration actually in the trial was about 3.8 years of all patients in the study. And they, just, they were continued on background methotrexate. Of course, at this point, it was open label. In fact, there were very significant radiographic differences in the patients who received tocilizumab for the entire time versus those who received tocilizumab uh, for the last four of the five years. There was, in fact, a 56% reduction overall in a mean it was a Ganan modified total sharp score uh, in the group who were who were uh, exposed to tocilizumab versus the group that which was not. Let's talk a little bit about the Ganan modified total sharp score. As you know, uh, there are different ways of achieving a metric when you look at an X-ray. The Ganan modified system has a total. Uh, number of units possible of 290. So if you have an erosion in every joint and joint space narrowing in every joint and the erosion is in every quadrant of every joint, you can conceivably have a Ganan modified score of 290. So the, this, the diminution that I gave you at 56% was in a mean score and the mean score includes erosions, joint space narrowing, and then an overall score. So that's an overall score. Honestly, what I pay attention to, and I think what most of us pay attention to when we look at radiographic scores is the erosion diminution. So in those who were on placebo initially, the initial erosions, uh, the, the erosion score at five years was about 1.5 and I'm not looking at the specifics. Uh, honestly, I may be off by a tiny amount. And in those who were exposed to tocilizumab from the very beginning, the mean erosion score was about a 0.36. So there was a very significant diminution in the mean erosion score. And those patients who had been exposed to the drug for the entire five-year period. But keep in mind, we're not looking at early disease here. We're looking at patients who already had disease for a mean of about nine years. Nevertheless, that first year uh, is, makes a difference whether they were on the drug for the entire period. Why that's so, I'm not exactly sure. We know that the, the actual rate of radiographic progression is greatest in the first year in the trial. And these patients obviously had very active disease, as I've described their baseline demographics. And the, the subsequent rate of radiographic progression was significantly lower. And albeit the patients were in fact on the active intervention after year one. What else can I tell you about this? The, uh, it was also, the, the uh, study also included uh, the clinical effects of the drug. <clears throat> Pardon me. And those clinical effects included um, ACR 2050 and 70. 
uh, DAS-28 low disease activity, which was achieved by about 50% uh, of all patients who were still on drug at year five. Um, that, I'm sorry, DASH-28 low disease activity was achieved by 70% of patients at year five, and DASH-28 remission was achieved by about 50% of patients at year five. Uh, that was a secondary outcome. The primary outcome were ACR 20s, 50s, and 70s, and they were sustained and even uh, became slightly more robust with time with the very good reports uh, of those responses we've seen before. Keep in mind, though, uh, that in an open-label trial, there's an enormous channeling bias. So at year three, four, and five, we are pre-selecting for those patients who can sustain treatment because they have obviously A, responded to the drug and B, not had a serious toxicity and not dropped out. Let's talk about toxicities. And toxicities can be grouped in different ways. And typically the way toxicities are reported is either all adverse events and a percentage of patients who, who have all, any adverse event or serious adverse events. Uh, we're really more interested in serious adverse events. Years ago when I studied all adverse events with methotrexate monotherapy, the rate of uh, adverse events in that study just with methotrexate was 85%. So the cumulative rate of all adverse events, and that includes a, a, a turned ankle, a motor vehicle accident, anything which occurs to a patient over a period of five years, as we would expect, was 95%. The rate of serious adverse events is really what I focus on as I compare uh, the, the potential safety of these agents. So, and these are given as rates of serious adverse events per 100 patient years. So what we look for is whether or not in any given interval, and these intervals are assessed every six months, the rate of serious adverse events, and that can be broken down to malignancies, infections, cardiovascular events are the big three. Whether the rate of serious adverse events uh, increases, stays the same, or diminishes. And in fact, it was very level with time. And the rate of all SAEs was approximately 10 per 100 patient years. And that is more or less consistent, same ballpark of what we've seen with many other biologic interventions. In addition, the, the rate of withdrawal uh, as measured every six months was between one and 3%. And that rate of withdrawal throughout each six month quadrant of the entire five year study, so there would be 10, 10 of those uh, samples. Uh, was stable at between 1% and 3%. So the rate of withdrawal was stable. The rate of SAEs was stable. There were, in fact, uh, over a period of five years, as we would expect, the number of deaths in the trial. There were, in fact, 22 deaths and, uh, in a, in a, with a denominator of over 1,000 in patients at, at a mean age in the 50s. We would indeed expect that. The, the deaths were analyzed, and there were a few malignancies. There was a melanoma. Uh, there, was a, uh, uh, there were some cardiovascular events. But overall, what can be said is that the nature and the prevalence of the, adverse ev of the serious adverse events was not different. It did not evolve in a direction which would give us a signal with time. So there are a couple of questions that uh, arise from this, and I'll take them in no special order. One is, of course, how do these results compare with uh, other results from other biologic agents? And of course, in a purely scientific sense, it is not appropriate to compare results across trials 
because the patients across trials are not quite the same. They're not randomized and they're not, to a certain extent, the patients themselves are apples and oranges. Nevertheless, we all do this and there's always a temptation to do that. So based upon the diminution in radiographic scores and the minimal radiographic progression, I would say that these results compare quite favorably. They're certainly, I would say, on the same shelf as the decrease in radiographic progression we see with many of the biologic agents. I would like to point out that these units of progression are somewhat arbitrary. With the denominator of 290, if you progress one unit, others have shown that the limit of sensitivity the intra-observer variability uh, is about three units. So these changes all occur in the right direction, but an experienced musculoskeletal radiologist cannot discern any better than two to three units on repeat measurement. And that is the case not just for this trial, but for any trial reporting radiographic outcomes. So we're, re we're really reporting on outcomes that an experienced rheumatologist is unlikely to be able to pick up. We're, we're, we're looking at subtle differences. They really are subtle. Nevertheless, when you add all the data together and you get the means and the standard deviations, you find that uh, in this trial, just like the other trials, there was a significant diminution favoring the intervention earlier. And that is reassuring. And so a, a, a progression of a, uh, a, a, an erosion score in the Gannett modified system of a half of a unit is really a tiny progression. And particularly in active patients, and I should mention, and I don't think I emphasized this earlier on, that these patients had to have an erosion at baseline they had to have a radiographic erosion. So they were all predisposed, let's say, to radiographic uh, disease. So that kind of a progression in radiographic erosions is really uh, quite satisfying from my standpoint. Uh, another question that comes up, did you observe a difference in the results between the four and eight milligram TOSI groups? Uh, no, that was not the way the data were analyzed. The data were grouped as all patients on tocilizumab, four and eight. And you recall that there were two escapes at 16 and 24 weeks. Uh, fours went to eights, uh, some zeros went to fours. And so your power to discern a difference in those small number of patients remaining on four uh, for that finite period of time was uh, minimal. And after one year, everyone was on eight milligrams. So the study was not designed at all and would have been terribly underpowered to look at that. Another question, based on your five-year safety results, do you feel that patients can take TASI indefinitely? Well, indefinitely is a big number. <laughs> and indefinitely sounds like a lifetime. So I would not want to extrapolate to beyond what the data actually show. I think that would be poor clinical science and it would be going out on a, uh, on a clinical limb which cannot be supported by evidence-based medicine. I think all we can say at this time is that these are the results through five years on a relatively uh, new intervention that has not been approved for anywhere near five years and that the, the results to date uh, appear favorable and consistent with what we've seen earlier on uh, in, uh, in these publications.